Joining us on Talk Markets and Earnings, Liz Young, Head of Investment Strategy at SoFi. Liz, great to have you with us. Um, how, how, bank earnings were, were good. Does that tell us anything about earnings season overall? Yeah, I mean, it's off to a good start with bank earnings, and this usually sets the tone, at least from a sentiment perspective, on what we might hear from other CEOs. Obviously, we haven't heard all the comments from the CEOs yet. I think the big banks have a really good lens into consumer activity, consumer borrowing activity, and obviously there's still some risks lurking out there. But I do think that financials are trading at a really attractive multiple right now compared to some of the rest of the market and haven't necessarily participated as much uh, in this recent rally. So if you're an investor and you must put money to work right now, I think that you can start looking at some of those diversified revenue streams that financials are offering. You know, we had Steve Eisman, a big short fame on Fast Money last night, Liz. And when we asked about financials ahead of earnings, you know, he said banks, you know, they're not interesting. <laughs> it's words. And one of the reasons is because of the increased capital requirements that are still to come that we don't really understand yet. And I'm wondering if that's a factor at all in your view. Um, he said you can hide out in a J.P. Morgan, but that's not really going to get you a lot of upside. Right. Well, the other thing about about big banks in particular, not interesting in the sense of they're not AI related names, right? They're not things that are going to see an 80 percent year to date return. So maybe not the sexiest of opportunities from an upside perspective. But you want to have that diversity, particularly if you think that the economy is still going to slow down a bit. You want to have that cyclical exposure on the other side. And the stress that banks went through in spring, I think, brought their valuations down to a more attractive level. That's not to say that they wouldn't come down further if we did have a recession. Obviously, they would be pressured as well. But you can look at them and try to figure out which ones are really exposed to the commercial real estate risks mm -hmm. that are still out there, really exposed to possible credit spreads blowing out. And some of these ones, like I said, with diversified revenue streams might be able to hold up much better. You know, we've been talking about the uh, the move in yields, uh, a dramatic move in just the past week or so, Liz. And I'm wondering, from your standpoint, you know, there's it's almost like a you know, glass half full, glass half empty. On the one hand, it's it's good, it's a good underpinning for valuations here, and could allow the stock market to move higher. But if you want to read the message of the 10-year note, it may not be a good one when it comes to the outlook for the economy. Where do you stand on that? Well, the, the move in yields that's happened this week, I think, was in direct reaction to softer C mm -hmm. CPI and softer inflation. I don't think we've necessarily hit the point yet where yields are coming down because people are afraid. But to your point, I, I think that the rally that we've seen in stocks right now requires a move in yields down to even just justify the valuations that we're at. So I don't know that it's a, a move down in yields would drive it up further. I think it has to justify the level of valuations that are current. Looking forward, if we get into the second half of the year, and now obviously we're transitioning into a new part of monetary policy, this sort of hold high and pause, I don't think that we're going to see necessarily another hike. I know the market still believes that we will. I don't think it's guaranteed. In any event, we're going to see few, if any, hikes in the second half of this year. Yields are going to have to sort of digest that. And what we've seen in the last few months is that stock valuations have moved up well, yields have moved up as well. And that's not the relationship that typically ensues. So something has to give in that space. I still am not sure that the market has decided whether or not stocks need to come down or yields need to come down. My take is that stocks probably have to give up some of the steam that they've gained over the last few months.